Well, that's a little song from Ireland. <clears throat> and I'll take you back over to Scotland and tell you a little bit of a story. I like telling stories, and I like telling stories of Scotland and, and Ireland and England because they, <clears throat> well, the hills over there are filled a little bit more with mystery, apparently, and a little bit more magic. Maybe it's the fog. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> but people imagine all sorts of things. And one thing that they imagine more often than not are fairies. There's tons of stories about fairies, and they're slightly different than your Tinkerbell and your, mm -hmm. your uh, Walt Disney, uh, you know, wonderful world of Disney or whatever. They're, they're slightly different. They're, they're a little bit mean, a little bit nasty, and, uh, you know, they, they could do nasty little tricks on you, like uh, stealing things and uh, putting them in the wrong place when you went to get them, and all sorts of tricks they played on people. But, this, but sometimes they also had magic about them, and they could grant wishes. And this is a little story about such a wish granting. It's about, oh, way up in the highlands of Scotland, there was a village. And there wasn't anything peculiar about this village, except that it had not one, but two humpy backed men. Now, the first humpy back man, he, well, he would have been a very nice looking chap if only he could straighten up, but, you know, he had fine, dark, curly hair, curly hair, a nice complexion, and he always had a gentle and kind word for everyone that he met. He was a nice chap, but he had this hump on his back. But the other one, if you could have done something with him, you could have done absolutely nothing with this other fellow. He was a pure mistake from top to toe. He had a nose on him that if it was an inch longer, it would be plowing a furrow in the ground. And a temperament, oh, mean, miserable, not a civil word in his head, you know? Nobody liked him. Oh, but the first chap, the good-looking one, he had set his heart upon the fairest young woman in the entire town. But of course, she wouldn't even blink at him, much less look. So he was a little bit despondent about the fact that he couldn't court this fair young lady, what with this great big hump on his back and all. So he took to wandering out of the town, and he went up through the heather, up to a huge hill overlooking the sea, and he was about to sit himself down, and he, well, when you've got a hump on your back, you've, you've got a mind where you're sitting, but he happened to find this wee bit of a knoll just made for the purpose. So he sits himself down, and he gazes out to sea. But he hadn't been sitting there very long when he heard this wee bit of a song. Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, over and over and over again. Well, he put his ear down to the ground, and sure enough, it was coming right out of the ground. And he listened to it. Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and he wasn't thinking too clearly, you know, so he, he was sort of humming along, and he said the words over and over again, and then all of a sudden he put a wee tail to it. He went, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, there was a puff of smoke, uh, smoke, and there was a flash of lightning, and there around him was a wee troop of fairies. About four feet high they were, just like you or I, you know, they weren't, didn't have wings on their backs or anything like that. They're just wee, tiny people. We call them the good people because if they could do you a nasty trick, sure enough they would. <laughs> and one of them, the foremost man amongst them, steps up to the humpy back man and says, And what are you doing here? <coughs> oh, uh, excuse me, he says, uh, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. I was just sitting here and I, I, I heard a wee bit of a tune and, and, and uh, I, I got carried away and I put a wee tail to it. I'm awfully sorry. Hawk, my man, says the wee fairy, have I got a tale to tell you? My friends and I have been sitting beneath this hillock for a thousand years, give or take a few hundred, and we had this wee bit of tune and we weren't awfully pleased with it. It wasn't very good. And here, you've come along and you put the finest wee tail to it. Oh, man, we're awfully pleased. Is there anything we can do for you? Well, he said, you see this hump on my back? Aye. Well, I'd dearly love to get rid of it. Stand up, my man. And sure enough, the humpy black man stood off, off slipped the hump, and as he turned round to thank all the people, 
they disappeared in a cloud of smoke. But he didn't waste any time. Now he was free of it. Down the hilly course, through the heather, through the town, out, through, out to see his sweetheart. Uh, but along the road, wouldn't you know it, who should he bump into but the second humpy back man? Hey, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, I'm off to see my sweetheart. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Aren't you the humpy back man, same as myself? Oh, I was, but no longer, he says. Oh, how, uh, wait a minute, how, how, did you, how did you manage to get rid of it? Oh, he says, well, all right, I was up on the hill there, and I sat down on a wee knoll, and I had this wee bit of a tune, and I put a wee tail to it, and the fairies came out, and they liked it, they gave me a wish, and off goes my hump. I'm off, I'm off, and down the road he goes to see his sweetheart. Well, said the second humpy back man, if they're getting rid of humps, I'm going up and get my share. So he tromps up through the town, up through the mud, up the hill, and sits down on the same wee knoll and gazes out to sea. Now, he has to wait a good long time, but sure enough, there he hears it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, over and over and over again. That's a terrible tune, he says. I can do better than that in my sleep. So he goes, <coughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, there was a clap of thunder and a cloud of smoke, and there was the wee people, sounds swarming around him like a swarm of bees, and the foremost man says, And what are you doing here? Oh, he says, I was just sitting here gazing out to sea, and I heard a wee bit of a tune, and I thought I could improve it a bit, so I put a wee tail to it. Well, my man, have I got a tale to tell ye, says the wee fairy. My friends and I have been sitting beneath this hillock for a thousand years, give or take a few hundred, and we had a wee bit of a tune and we weren't awfully pleased to it, but just, just this morning, a fellow comes along and puts the finest wee tale to it. Oh, and now you come along and set us as far back as we were forward, my man. Yes, yes, says the humpy back man. You came up here with one hump on your back, you'll go back with two. So I happen to have one here, up it goes. And I tell you, the humpy back man, his nose was ploughing a furrow in the ground when he returned to the town. And that'll teach you to keep your nose out of other people's business. The humpy back man.